Mr. Uh, Mr. Silence, please. People are watching, so everybody kind of knows who you are that way. Okay. So. Angela Lipsy, I'm the elementary principal and superintendent from North Mahaska Schools. And I want to state my position. There's always a win-win for Mahaska County. I've resided in Mahaska County all my life, and I trust that's what you guys are working for as well. So is that win-win? Um, just a few comments. And um, meeting in my office this fall with Tom Thirty and, and Mark, you stated that Supervisors were not looking at TIF for at least two years, stating there was not enough capacity now. I'm just wondering what has changed from approximately six weeks ago to now. Um, also in a public hearing on September 18th, it was stated that supervisors would not take more than half the assessed valuation if the windmills were tipped. It's my understanding now that you're asking for the full evaluation, at least for this year. Um, I understand TIF is for economic development, and while I certainly know there's roads in Mahaska County that need repair, I would ask that you would just inform us on how repairing the roads will directly impact that economic development. And just publicly state that the TIF impacts the overall tax rate for the North Mahaska School District. And for this um, next fiscal year, it will likely increase the tax rate of 15 cents per thousand of, of assessed value. And that is an estimate because um, when you are projecting tax rates, it really depends on enrollment and other factors as well, such as supplemental state aid. But that's our best guess at this time, that at least for next year, it would be a 15 cent increase per thousand valuation. And as the windmills continue to go on, um, the capacity I mean, that tax rate will continue to increase if they're tipped at the full amount um, or even half that. Um, I want you to know again that um, I'm part of a workforce development board here in Madison County where we're really trying to grow um, our county in efforts to increase, increase opportunities for all. And um, I would just ask again that you take all this into consideration as you're making a decision. And one last question besides what has changed, um, will all the dollars be spent in the North Mahaska Community School District? since the taxpayers of the district will be paying for the TIF with all the dollars be spent there. Mr. Grunbeck, would you like to explain a little bit more in detail about this money and, and the potential of where it's going? Uh, urban rural fund of TIFs. Basically it's a Increment in assessed value or taxable value. And right now, the windmills are at uh, taxable at value at zero. And they will be 
started being assessed January 1 for the next fiscal year, roughly $12,200,000. And we'll increase that amount for the next six years. So in the seventh year, the total taxable valuation will be roughly $73,257,600. So, I would respectfully ask what Mrs. Livesey thinks this is changing because we were always told that these wind turbines that it was going to be used for uh, improvements on the roads and bridges. That's been the understanding ever since the day they came in because of all the uh, destruction they've done on the roads with the construction of the windmills. Um, this is not an education issue. This is not even an economic development issue. This is plain and simply a safety issue. This is getting dangerous, folks. Russ, can I, can I just have you come up like, sure. here, state your name and address, and <clears throat> state your question, and we'll try and address them when we're all finished, I guess. That way we're not conversing back and forth. In that yeah, my name is Russ Feiner. I live south of Tainer, 11, 12 Galeston Avenue. I'm certainly not against education at all. I, I just don't understand why we've changed directions all of a sudden are even contemplating giving this money to the school districts or economic development when it was promised to be used for roads and bridges. Um, I think at least two out of three of you ran on the platform with fixing roads and bridges. Um, now we think that our money might be threatened and this is not an economic development anymore. It's a plain safety issue. I don't know when you're, how many people you're going to wait for to be killed before it happens. Uh, a school bus driver here that drives these roads every day, they're absolutely miserable. Next spring when all the tar's out of the road and the roads get soft again, it, there will be accidents. So I don't, you know, chunks of pavement coming out of the roads, I call the county at least once a month to tell them to come and fix another hole that the pavement's popped out. Just waiting for one of my trucks to throw one of them through a car windshield and kill somebody. I, I just don't understand the concept here. What's, what's it take? The ditches are all full of dirt. The culverts are all full of dirt. The highways are junk. The soft spots in the gravel roads are there because the ditches aren't cleaned out. I, I don't know what you're waiting for. I, I just, this was always promised to us to be for roads and bridges. And the last batch of supervisors mentioned that Oh, we got to do this. This is a windfall for the state. We'll be able to, or for the county, we'll be able to fix our roads and bridges now. And now you're contemplating robbing the money to do something else with it. I'm sorry, guys. I just got to get, got to get the roads and bridges fixed. Or there's going to be fatalities. Thank you. talk about economic development and numerous research has shown that the number one way to ensure economic success is to have a well-educated populace and um, making sure that we have well-educated youth that want to stay in the county will be um, head and shoulders above any road improvements as far as creating uh, economic development for Mahaska County. Thank you. Marshall Fire, I live at 1112 Gale Snyder, South Tanner. Um, and in terms of education, uh, I'd like to know, education seems to be somewhere where there's a never-ending need for money in education. And to say that, well, education will lead to better economic development, I don't know how you can specifically say, well, the school needs this extra $500,000 to, to fix our education or to make it so much better that it's going to lead to this growth versus the money they already have um, as compared to the road which has a very concrete 
uh, uh, if you fix the road, you won't have these problems of concrete coming out and needing to fix the tar and only having one passable lane for the entire summer. Um, that seems like a very easy thing to fix right now, to do with the money right now. That education, I mean, I could say we should give, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 million to the schools. When's it, you know, when does that stop? When is it going to stop saying, well, I'll just create more uh, economic value the more we get to it? So. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leslie Van White, 108 North Lincoln Street in New Sharon. Um, I would just caution you, uh, be careful moving forward. There's 1,287 residents in New Sharon. Um, the average household income, according to the last census, was about $50,000. Over half of our residents are under the age of 18 and enrolled in the school. Um, if you move forward and increase the tax rates on our citizens, you are getting dangerously close to taxing people out of this district. Um, my parents live in another state. They live in Florida. Their home is valued three times mine. They have a larger lot. They live in a um, deed-restricted community that has everything but the gate. And I pay $200 less in property taxes than they do. For, like I said, their house is valued three times mine. If you increase the tax rates, you are going to end up taxing people out of this district. So I caution you, please be careful and keep in mind that this is people's money that you're dealing with. Also, um, I've taken a look at the uh, code, and the majority of the projects that you're talking about are well outside of the district that you're intending to TIF. And frankly, it's highly inappropriate to tip New Sharon and then spend those funds quite a ways away down by Eddieville. Um, New Sharon is a very modest, very humble community. We gladly and proudly take care of our own, but we are not a piggy bank for the county to come and dip their fingers into when they need supplemental funds. Thank you. I'm Marvin Worley, uh, 100, 1466 100 Street on the north end of the Mahaska County on the Jasper County line. Uh, I'm in the courthouse doing the licensing. With a, a little background, we have the trucking company and then the farming operation. I'm in the courthouse several times a year. And I'd always look in the supervisor's door to see if anybody's there. And if somebody's in there, I'd always go in and say, hey, how are we doing our roads and stuff? Man, it's coming. We're going to get them. And that's been, I've been hearing that for 15 years. And then the turbines come in. Now we're going to get them. First off, we're going to get the tax money, plus the, all the heavy traffic from the turbines. they got to repair the roads to as good or better shape just out of their pockets than they were before. Well, nothing's ever happened. The roads just keep getting worse and worse. Uh, a couple questions. What percentage of, of this tax money comes from rural area compared to <coughs> the cities? Does any, is that? I'm sorry, what was your question? Uh, what per, I, I, I think that our rural people pay probably quite a bigger share of taxes than the city people. Is that a correct statement? You'd like to know what percentage of yeah. the, the school districts comes from rural versus yeah. urban? I'll answer that when we, when we finish. Okay. Uh, and on these roads, I'm going to try and keep this brief. When we, us farmers and people that drive on gravel roads all the time, we don't have to look at our tires to know when our tires are wore out. We start getting flat all the time. What do we do? We get new tires. We don't fix a flat every other day, spend 50 bucks to do that. We fix the problem. We got a problem in rural roads. We got to fix it. It's not getting better. Uh, I guess that's. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Turcher, 2476, 160 Street with Sharon. I don't care to get into a war of words with anyone, but the lady that spoke to the question. Please just address the door. Okay. 
to the board, uh, we talk about roads and uh, I think a lot of people think the gravel roads are okay. I'd like to throw out a couple true statements. In 1944, my grandparents built a house on Oxford Avenue. They applied for their permit and they were told the setback had to be two to two and a half times what it normally was because it was in the 10-year plan that Oxford Avenue was going to be paved between 170th and Highway 63. I traveled that same road tonight to get to this meeting and it's still gravel. So I guess for those that think that the roads are up to snuff and we're keeping up with the times, we are not. As far as taxing, as far as taxing ourselves out of it, uh, someone made a comment to that. I think we already have. I showed you gentlemen a parcel of ground that's going to sell in uh, Randy County Thursday. It's probably better than any parcel of ground in Mahaska County and the tax is on it for $30 an acre. And I've got some that's somewhat comparable but nowhere near to it, and it's 41. So I think we've already taxed ourselves out of it. If, you know, for lack of better words, and yes, mm -hmm. the roads and the bridges do need attention. And I appreciate your time, thank you. I serve on the North Mahaska School Board, and I've had the pleasure of sitting at this table with you gentlemen previously. And I just wanted to clarify something. I didn't plan on speaking tonight, but we want people to understand that we weren't here tonight asking for money because we already did that. We, you know, we come down here repeatedly to ask for money. When we talked to you guys earlier, you recommended, you know, maybe you should do a bond issue because we weren't, you weren't going to be able to promise X amount of dollars, you know, from the windmill income. And so we did the bond issue, and we received overwhelming support of it. And so our concern tonight is that the, the information that we publicized to our taxpayers for that bond issue is now going to be skewed a bit because we didn't expect the TIF issue. And it was going to be that our taxes weren't going to increase. But then this change, because we were told, you know, the TIF wasn't going to happen for a couple of years. So um, our bonding people, the Iowa State School Board Association and the Iowa Association, or the school, the state school association, gave us numbers based on the fact that they wouldn't be tipped. So we, you know, we're concerned a little bit about what has changed since then. Because we went ahead and raised our money by the bond issue. But now the information we provided to us is a little bit. That's just want to clarify that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Lord Corral, 1983, 175th Street. The blacktop road has chuck holes in it. Uh, question. That half a million dollars you want to TIF. How many years of taxes is that going to take? How many actual dollars will they pay? Because as I understand, they only pay on 5% valuation the first year and 10% the second. And builds up to where they get the 30% of valuation and then they quit raising anymore. So if you could give me us a length of time, is this going to be one year's worth? Is this going to be two years worth of taxes? Or how long will it take to, to get that 500000 Jeff, would you like to say anything? Jeff Heil, Northland Securities. Um, been working with the board for several years. I'm going to do a little different introduction than I normally do. Um, you know, normally I just come in as, as financial advisor to the board, but uh, also I'm a farmer. 
and that's what I got involved in public finance to begin with. Also, I've uh, served eight years under both governors as chairman and president of the Iowa Finance Authority. I've got uh, several securities licenses, and if I provide any false information of anything, I lose licenses and the MSRB and SEC, they don't find 100,000, our company would be fined a million, two million plus. So everything I will say tonight is gonna be factual that I will back up with Iowa Code and what it is. I've been a county auditor for eight years in Marshall County, and so I've used, understood TIF as an elected official and as a public finance advisor. What I want to explain here tonight is that there is no increase of taxes resulting from TIF on, on new value. We're talking, and I, I like the school board's uh, member who, who spoke that uh, there was an assumption that new value is coming on, and that's why tax rates, what they projected was on new value. Today, Everything on urban renewal is new value by the wind turbines. And so it's every, everything up today is, there's nothing been on board. And so when you look at the, the, the columns there, um, you know, the revenue, the gentleman asked here, 500,000. The reasons, I'll, I'm going to answer a question first and then get to this, but 500,000 is the not to exceed for the first year. The first year really is going to be around 300,000. So the 500,000 was a not to exceed number. So the, the reason they're filing for 300,000 today is an internal loan. They're not going to borrow interest outside. It's to capture all of that first year's increment. It's going to be 300,000. Then it's going to jump up to 700,000 a year. Then it's going to go up each year. So the question is, is the board going to use 50% or more? The plan that we've talked about all along is to do a few of roads and bridges. This is going to generate about $30 million over the life of the TIF. And the board, and we've talked about that all that they've been talking about is using 10 to $15 million of it. Now that's, that's a plan. So that's the 50% of saying they don't want to use all of that. So to come back to the point of Will taxes be increased from today, last year's taxes to here? This is new value. They're, if they use all of the TIF value, it's the same value for the school district. It's this is not forcing a tax increase. The the actual the bond issue vote that took place is what raised the taxes. Action by the board of supervisors are not raising any taxes. The the the, the wind tiff, the 82 three towers, we, we were going to chuckle here, the 82 four towers, 82 in this year, 84, two more coming in, they pay all of the revenue. Nobody's taxes are going up. This whole pool of money is what is being paid by the wind turbines. Nobody else's taxes are raised up for this. Now this, this is factual, we've got a shaking of the head. My securities license is on the board. I work with 60 plus counties of the 99, and I've worked with 25 counties, particular in urban renewal and TIF. Uh, everything here is the way the code is, the way the facts are. Um, it is, when we talk about an increase of taxes, and I like, because one of the best things was is, is the school board member who did say, hey, we went out with the intent of this maybe, we're going to maybe get these values. There's no guarantee of anything. What happens here is the supervisors has to look at the whole pie. The, the school is looking at their piece of a pie. And if we look at the 13 or 16 cents the superintendent talked about, that is a true possibility if all that in the future taxes could decrease by that much. This action is not causing taxes to go up. This action is keeping it at the current value and giving no new value. The action that raised taxes is a positive bond issue vote. But that's a good positive thing. 
to look at say hey it wouldn't raise as much if we got all the value that is a correct statement but the the action by the board is not causing taxes to go up the act the action by the voters to put a bond issue in place is what raised the taxes nothing by tiffing or nothing by the supervisor's action causes it to go up only by increased askings by a municipality now i worked with this board we did a 911 issue that was an increase of tax asking because it had to be done that's going to raise taxes here we've got several road projects that need to be done and you can look at this the supervisor has to look at the whole picture a consolidated tax rate it varies from your townships anywhere from 25 to 35 dollars a thousand is what your consolidated tax rate the school portion is 12. you got the county portion you got cities townships so if the supervisors do not use all of the revenue that's that the wind turbines will pay for they can go ahead and do an essential purpose bond and have the debt service levy pay for it they've got a projected of just starting with five million dollars of road projects you need probably 20 million in this county and that would not even be a, a, a very good dent in it but if you start with five million dollars to start that would raise your taxes 32 cents if they do not tiff if you if you're gonna you look at the whole picture if the school is saying we don't want any tiff and we want this increase to to lower what we voted to increase your taxes that's the issue is the vote was taking place to raise taxes on the assumption that they may get the value and if that would have came in that would have lowered the levy but the vote caused more askings now if they want more money here to fix roads you can either take 32 cents for every five million dollars and then tax it to the taxpayers or that 16 cents that would have gone to the school your, your increased tax is 16 cents by not doing the wind turbine tiff and to answer to go to another question is the 500,000 misconception about schools the schools do not lose any money because of tiff they're based on a school aid formula by population so so we're not talking about loss of dollars we're only talking about the levy that was voted on on a previous bond issue that was is going to go up more than what they had shared with the public assuming that all of the value of the tiff would have taken place the tiff is not causing an increased taxes the only way taxes go up is if the supervisors the school or the cities ask for more money that's the only way taxes go up not because of an action of putting it in an urban renewal or not what we're doing here is taking that pool of money that the that the wind turbines are going to pay it's going to be 300 it's going to up about 300,000 this first year then it's going to go up to 700,000 then it's going to go up to 1.2 million dollars and 1.5 every year and the question is do you want to take that money and put it into roads or do you want to let it go back to the taxing bodies I'm going to show you a, a slide and all these slides that I'll show you these are from Larry Siegel who is the finance advisor to the schools this is not my data this is this is actually from the, the advisors to the suit to the school board association and what happens here I'm going to show you this is the difference between TIF and no TIF when we say if we're going to TIF we would be a poor district right here that's if we TIF but if we don't TIF we call it a rich district the reason being is if we're a poor district we took all that value away from the TIF and we didn't let it go to the schools or basically the school aid formula if we do TIF or we don't TIF then we become a rich one because that value the, the pool of money here 
let's just say this this is one student at six thousand dollars okay this whole pool of money where does it come from the first comes from the five dollars and forty cents there's three parts of the school aid formula if if we tiff we take that value away so that first five dollars only generates a small portion That's if we tiff it. If we don't tiff, there's more value, and that, that generates more money here. But when we come up, and let's just say this is $100 or $1,000. doesn't matter what it is, this pool of money. Let's just say it's $1,000. i am going to estimate this around um, $200 of the $1,000. Then you get the state aid formula pays up to 87.5%. And this top portion is what we're talking about right here, 12.5%. This is local property taxes. And this is where the 16 cents comes in, in this top number. What happens is if you TIF, if you TIF, we're a poor district, the state is putting in more money to the school formula. They don't lose, you don't lose any dollar to the local district. The state has to pay more. Over here, when we do TIF, or we don't TIF, the state pays less. School gets the same amount. Question? For the sake of uh, myself and perhaps a couple others here, would you uh, tell us what TIF means? Tax increment financing. Good question. Tax increment financing is you're using tax dollars, incremental new value. So a wind turbine sits on a farm, and it's got a, let's just say it's got a $1,000 an acre value. I'm just going to make it simple. That 1000 in it, they build a wind turbine on there. This, everybody's going to get all the taxes from the 1000 right away. Increment means is when you put in urban renewal, all new value that's never been in anybody's taxing body is going to be somewhere going to go. So why it's increment, it's if you do it, it's not taking away anything from the past. It's only new growth. So all of a sudden that wind turbine comes up on there, it's paying $25,000 of taxes per tower. Roughly, I know that because I live in an area and I worked on an urban, I've got 70 wind turbines around the property I live and they, I hear them, I live around them and I know how they pay taxes. But each tower is roughly $25,000. So on top of that thousand, an acre, this new, what we call new increment, this $25,000 is now, do you want it to go to all the taxing bodies as new money? Or do you want to, the state says, we're going to allow economic development. Anything new can be used in an economic development project that does not affect anything in the past. So we take all those new dollars and we, we build roads or we build uh, uh, anything that's considered in an economic development. And that's a very broad area. So that's what t this tax increment financing is, is. It's taking new dollars because of a project that's grown and putting it into another new project. You don't take away, so you never take away the base. People's taxes that are paying, the farmers who's paying the base is always going to, pay those and go to the taxing bodies. The question is here is, and a couple gentlemen came up here and says, hey, we, we've heard the wind turbines are here, now we're going to get the roads. That's all they're talking about is using the new, uh, the new dollars right in here. These are the values, and then over here is uh, the dollars. Question? Mr. Wow. Yes. I agree with most of what you're saying, mm -hmm. not all. Yeah, that's fair. The explanation that you gave, if you're taking the balcony view, overall, the tax rate will increase because 
the overall rate for the district goes up, the overall tax rate, because it takes more uh, dollars to generate the same amount in the additional levy, so it has a direct impact on the overall tax rate. And I can show a comparison no. of TIP without not, TIP. If, if you did not ask for any more dollars than the previous year, absolutely not, because we are not taking one dollar in new, because I answered the gentleman back here, it's all new increment. But going forward, yes it does. Because the bond came in and because of the no. tip, it okay. increases okay. tax rates. No, okay. That's it. Let me just start let me just start answering some questions that were asked. Yep. Um, thank you, Jeff. Lawrence, you asked how long will five hundred thousand take to get back? There's roughly give or take one year. Five hundred thousand. <laughs> I think I think roughly figured up there's around three hundred and sixty thousand dollars left for TIF. The first thing that's come off these values is the debt limits. The school passed a bond. TIF does not affect that one way or the other. That money will come off the top of TIF regardless of what we do. The county has a bond on a radio system. That money's gonna come off the top of this regardless of what we do. So there's roughly three hundred and thirty to three hundred and sixty thousand dollars left per year. Um, Margaret Redcliffe, you asked about the bond information. And last fall, you guys came here and said, don't tip because you want HVAC, you want school security, and all that stuff. And so don't tiff. And so you voted on it, and you passed a bond issue. That bond, that bond issue is not affected by whether we tiff or we don't tiff. That bond is going to get, it will be part of your assessed values to pay off that bond regardless. So whether we tiff or we don't. It will. But did you and Tom not meet with Angela six weeks before, I mean, six weeks ago before we had the bond issue and say, we're not going to tip? Did you not meet with for two years? That's right. You met that same conversation. Now, let's, let's be honest about the whole conversation. Yeah. Because in the whole conversation, Angela said it looks grimmer in the near term than it does in the long term. Mm -hmm. Now, we also had a meeting October 30, and it said, you know what? Things look better in the near term and grim in the long term. And so in fact, the 16 cents we're talking about, we had a meeting on October 30. Mm -hmm. And that's right. It was Tom Flaherty, myself. I wanted the whole board to be there to hear this. So I knew this part I was going to get into is he said, she said. But we had a Department of Management from Iowa, from Iowa, Sean from the State School, so School Board Association, mm -hmm. Tom Flaherty, Sue Brown, and myself, Angela, <coughs> and, your, and your Treasurer Secretary. And it, and it started out as 16 cents is what it's going to increase. And will continue to increase throughout. And as we went through along, your CPA caught an error in, in the formula that you guys were using in your proposals. You didn't put the correct value of the pipeline of the windmills in. And so that right there decreased your, your, the budget by 13 cents. So now we went from 16 to 13 cents. So now we're down to only 3 cents increase. And then we looked in from further, there was no valuation, the incorrect valuation of the pipeline even coming into, into the, the scheduled formula of what you're proposing for, for formula. Okay. And so we're, so we're talking... They didn't know what, how the pipelines would affect it. I mean, whenever we'd ask about the, you know, whenever we were here earlier. So when we, so when we, left, so when we left that meeting... On the 30th? On the 30th, mm -hmm. Matt, Gl Matt Gillespie yeah. said, we're on, we'll honor three cents. And you know what, Angela? With the debt levy, we've got a lot of leeway to do what we need to get done because we have not settled on any of that yet. And so this 16 cent, as October 3, the last I heard from all our meetings, we're down below under 3 cents. Okay. Our problem was is that we based our communications at the bond issue on what they were told whenever you guys met, whenever you and Tom met with Angela. But all the money on the bond so. is not affected by TIF. You're going to get the, you're going to use the assessed values of these windmills. 100% valuation of these windmills to pay off the bond. So will all of the dollars be spent in Mahaska County then for the road improvements? And Here, here's, here's the CPA's email. We had, we had um, Bob Johnson involved. Mm -hmm. the Department of Management called him an expert in this tax area field, endorsing with me. In fact, before this meeting, October 30, I wanted all the numbers to go to the Department of Management, Jeff, Bob. I want everybody to be on the same page. When we had a meeting, we could come up to a final, final answer. And so Bob and, 
and Matt were working on this stuff before the meeting. And here's the emails that were sent. <clears throat> the debt levy is not even going to be effective whether we tiff or we don't. That money is going to come off the windmills before anybody else even touches it. The county is carrying debt. The valuation is going to be used for that debt before anybody else even touches it. That's correct. It shows up in that additional levy. Mark, I have an updated sheet I can get you to show. So, in the formula they were using, they were using the valuation of the windmills. $72,000 in the formula. <clears throat> anyway, Matt Gillespie caught it. This, this, this square is inaccurate because you're supposed to be using $12,279,000 as an estimated value of the windmills. So he, he did a formula right there. We're sitting in, in, instead of two seventy. dollars it's going to go down to 257, $2.56 per, per levy. Mm -hmm. And that was going to come off the school board's levy. So that's where the 16 cent increase was projected, also got dropped down to 13 cents. And in this formula that they were all using before the meeting, we also found out that there was no pipeline values even included in the valuation formula's estimations either. And how does that affect it, the pipeline? That gives you more valuation, so your levy should go down even farther. And has that been proved out? I mean, is that finalized? Yeah, the Department of Management sent that out. That's in here, right? That's both of them. Okay. The school, re the school received roughly two hundred and thirty-seven thousand last year of the pipeline, with a valuation of sixty-five million. This year, the valuation of the pipeline is going to go to eighty-three million. So that's an increase in valuation. The school gets captured all. Their portion of what's ever in that school district. This is for the whole county, 83 million. Right. So whatever portion's in the North Massa School District, the North Massa School District will be able to capture that increase in valuation. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to take the 1,287 residents in New Sharon and tiffing. We're not tiffing New Sharon. We're tiffing windmills. But it goes along with, someone asked who's... What percentage we owe what is urban? Yes, I got a phone call on that this week as well. I did just Mahaska County. There's some portion of North Mahaska that's in Powell Sheep County. Mm -hmm. And I did not go to Powell Sheep County to find the information out there, but I'm assuming, other than a little bit of Barn City, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming most of it's gonna be rural as well. In Mahaska County alone, 86.4% of, of new North Mahaska valuation is rural, and 13.5% is urban. And urban, I fear, the valuations of New, new Sharon and Barn City, and I combine those. Um, economic development, our roads economic development. I got a report. This is from the Eddyville, Ajimoto, Cargill, the site down there. Now, I've not fully read the report yet. There's made a lot of different information in different ways. Um, they're talking about the economic impacts just in that center alone in Eddyville. $2.2 billion. If you go to the region, 8.3 billion. Their products only get there by road and leave by rail or leave by road. Cargill is a big proponent of a better road on 63. Cargill is a big pusher for infrastructure. And so I'll answer the question. So now versus later, after that meeting on the 30th, 
It is my understanding your picture of finances look better in the near term than did in the long term. In terms of our finances? That's the way I understood it. In terms of the district tax rate, with the windmills coming on and value, the overall tax rate increase initially is not as great as it will be as you go out. And the capacity in terms of our bond falling and not having to take the full amount will decrease in the future as well. We don't plan to take the full 270 if we don't have to, just like you didn't plan to take the full tip if you don't have to. So but, it will continue but to that, gradually. But that, but that valuation is there for the total amount of bond, whatever you choose to take. That has, that has nothing to do with whether we right. take or we don't. Yes, I get that. But their levy rate, you're, you're right. The levy rate, assuming that all 30% come in, would considerably right. lower your levy rate each year. But as the part what they have to do is to get started they need that first two years to get to get the base started as you get into the same time when your rate's going to be going up the third fourth fifth year they might be only using 30 or 40 percent of it they won't because they're not going to be using it that they need to the first couple of years to get started so with the pipeline and they're not going to be using all of that value you're going to be getting some. It, it, it won't be a hundred percent that you, you calculate, but also valuations go up every year across the whole district. So when you take all your district valuations plus once we get into third, fourth year, and with the pipeline, I think you're going to be closer. But it, it, I agree with you. It, it will be impacted from what your calculations that you use. That, that is a true. That is true. With that pipeline, I didn't hear anything of economic development there. Did that all go to the schools then? The, the valuation of the pipeline? Yeah. That gets broken down to all taxing districts. So the school district got their share, um, rural roads got their share, the general fund got their share, Indian Hills got their share, uh, tuberculosis fund tax levy got their share, the hospital got their share of it. Last, last year, the pipeline in Mahaska County alone put in roughly $1.7 million in Mahaska County. That will increase this year, is what our projections are. And I say in Mahaska County, I'm talking all the taxing districts combined. Mark, I had a question from some um, constituents in the schools there. Will all of the um, dollars from this TIF be in Mahaska County in the North Mahaska School District? As of now, I, and I say yes. But let you also understand all the water trucks that took care of the pipeline and took care of all the windmills for the concrete used roads that were not in your district. And right now, the, the rural people that are using the lost funds are already paying bonds to repair that. By law, we're, on, we're only allowed to transfer $3, three or four cents, don't call me by that, seven eighths or six, whatever cents, to out of, rural roads only get funded by rural people. And so we, we're allowed to tax $3 and up to three cents to transfer that into secondary roads. And we do the full extent to that. Um, we also take 16 cents 15 cents from the general fund, it's $200,000 in, to put into secondary roads. By law, we've got, to, we've got to do at least 75% of all that or we lose our state funding. We're doing the maximum allowed possible plus the state funding in the, in the roads. So what's that on an annual basis for the dollar? Um, Just a rough guess. I'm not going to hold you to it. The, the total rule, if you're not going to hold me to it, I'm going to say seven half million million right now, but that includes county levies and farm to market and state funding and, and everything like that that we're, that we're receiving. <clears throat> we're, we, we, we got, I'll be honest, this is what we're looking at. We are bonded out 
we've, we are borrowed against the loss of the penny tax on roads already. We've bonded, we've, we are borrowed, we can borrow out on our farm to market and our federal funding up to three years. We've done 2.8 of each of those funds. The advantage of borrowing against those is they're interest free. So we basically have enough money to maintain for the next two, two years, three, two point seven years. We do have money in the bridge fund, so we're hoping to work on some bridges the next year. Because if you get too much in a bridge fund, then, stop, then the state stops giving you support for bridges as well. So this is all intertwined with state. It's, I mean, it's all, and, and, <clears throat> we, we, and Mr. Feiner is correct. And I'll do fairness to the school district, everybody involved. Mark Dolan, William Weldon did have Jeff Howe come down here in early 2017 because they were talking about uh, tiffing this stuff for roads. So Russ Finer is correct. And I know the school district, when they heard the windmills were coming in, said, hey, we're going to have more, more stuff. We got things we want to spend too. And this is where things have went to bam. And the Department of Management is very good at exp explaining this. This happens in more counties that uh, you got two different taxing entities making plans and all of a sudden things come together. <coughs> But for the, as far as the bond goes that you just passed, this TIF has no effect on it at all. You use the full evaluation to pay off that bond, just like the full evaluation of the entire taxing assessed taxable valuation within the school district. I just might say one more time, from the school standpoint, we're not here to you know, go against the county and what you feel you, that needs to be done, and we're really here to seek a win-win for North, uh, North Mahaska and um, the whole Mahaska County. So, again, did, did, we understand that you need growth as well. And this is, Angela and I, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some give and take here because if <coughs> we're, we're looking at, <coughs> where's this vibration? So in, this, in six years, we're looking at an evaluation on the, on the uh, windmills of roughly $73 million. Evaluation on the pipeline, if it holds steady, around $83 million. It's a $150 million taxable valuation increase that should show up. The pipeline will show up already now. The windmills are stepping it up. The rural, the rural residents paid for those roads for that taxable valuation increase. The state roads and the rural roads what got used. And so we've already talked about if the county can't recoup some of those expenses, which school district do we want to work with to get some of our expenses back? Or what's the incentive of encouraging more development in that area if we can't work together? And so I've tried to share with the school board, I'm gonna share with you. We've got a road that needs work, something terrible. And so we can say, you know what, we're not going to do anything. And I'm going to tell you, two landlords can go to court and say, we want to file a mandamus action. We want our road fixed up. And guess what? The county is by statute required to maintain roads. And you know what the court's going to say? Fix the road. And you know what we're going to do? Bond the entire county. Because there's no money elsewhere. And, and we already bonded for the Lacey Road, and that road was 1.1 million per mile. And it was not on the five-year plan. Which road? The one going out, what is it, Glendale, going out to the Lacey Highway. Okay. That's where all the trucks came and got their water for everything? It was not on the five-year plan. The one south of Tainer was not even on the five-year plan, if I understand it correct. I'm kind of new at all this, too. But these roads were tore up to bring this value to the county. It's hard, you know... To me, we need to use some of them funds to fix the roads back up. And so what we're looking, like looking at is, I've talked with Jeff at length, I've talked to Bob Johnson at length. $300,000 will not pay off a $5 million bond, wouldn't pay the interest the first year. So we're looking at trying to get up to six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 a year so we can start paying some interest and some principal on a bond. So that takes, a, that takes a lot of what's left the first year, a lot of what's left the second year, and start diving into what's left the third year. 
So we can start paying off some 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 debt. So we can pay some interest interest in the and the and, and the principal. I do not intend taking the whole amount for the next 20 years. But I got to have something to fix the road. The court's going to the court will order us to do it one way or the other. We're either going to do it voluntarily or the court will do it. Because it's pretty obvious for the last three or four years. The engineers have sat here, all the supervisors admitted it's a terrible road. It's not going to be a problem with the court to say, boy, you guys admitted it's a terrible road. <coughs> and the previous supervisors did promise some of this to go to TIF. Now we don't we don't have to we don't have we don't have to honor their word because every board has their own decisions to make. And it looks like to me, according to Jeff Howell, that if you don't TIF them, the state just pulled back some of its money, so you're going to spend it. You're just not going to get as much from the state. If I understand that correct, right, Jeff? If if you TIF, the state pays more. Right. If you so don't you just, TIF, you're then, going to then lose, the local property taxes. By not TIF, and you're going to lose state funding. Is that how, am I understanding it right? Because I wasn't in these meetings, so. Well, by Tiffy, you're using those dollars for economic development, and the school gets the same amount of money instead of coming from the local property taxpayers. The state has to pay a higher foundational aid for it. Okay. Is there any further questions we can try and address? I got one comment to make, and as a voter, I think communication to us voters is pretty pathetic because I never knew about this meeting by any communication. I didn't even hear about that uh, bond issue by any communication. And I live in North Mahaska School District. And it seems like it goes to a certain few people and that's it. I am in Mahaska County. I know the North Mahaska School District sent out to every box holder. <clears throat> Good for them too. I don't know where ours is at. How how would you like to do how would you, how do you have any recommendations how we could do it differently? Um, I don't know how it's done originally because I've never seen communication on it. On um, there's a, there's a county website www.maskacounty.org and every time there's a meeting there's always an agenda posted. <coughs> Our meetings are usually Monday morning. We thought the public would want to be here, so we held this one this evening. And so every Friday morning, Sue publishes the agenda, and it's on the website. Um, so we have to watch the website. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how else to do I mean, if you got other ideas, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears how to do it better, too. What's a good form of media do you get? I mean, how can we, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, open, I'm open for years. If you got better suggestions, I'm, I'm willing to listen. Don't you have to publish it in the paper, too? Not, not a regular agenda. This, this, res, this hearing was was published in the papers. Yeah. It's got to be like ten days before, right? Yeah. Some four days before, not more than ten, I believe. Okay. Twenty less than ten, no more than twenty. Yeah. So it was in the Herald then, right? So yeah. And then the New York Sun. And the Sun. The Sun. He put power in holes. We don't get any <laughs> so I mean, I, I mean, if you guys got ideas, I, I agree with you. The, the more informed the public is, I, the, the better off it is for everybody. Very nice. We'll take a motion to go back on the open session. We'll close the public hearing. Second that. No, I'll take a motion. I make a motion we go back into open session. Non public session. Uh, Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Vote the same sign. <laughs> I do want to say thank you for everyone for coming. Thank you. Next again, the agenda is approving resolution 2019-36, authorizing loan to tax increment fund. 
Um, I'll just be honest with you. I spoke with Jeff a lot, spoke with Bob Johnson a lot. Um, the $500,000 is in there. That's what he put in there. We can change whatever number we want. But it says it has to come out of rural, fund, rural services fund. Um, unfortunately, I'll be honest with you, we've, we have spent every dime we can on the roads. So that ending balance fund is only limited to $140,000 by June 30. And so they suggested adding, if we do this in section one, to the taxing rate revenue fund should be repaid to the revenue services fund, just putting in the words or general fund. Because we don't have enough money to borrow against. We're only going to be $140,000 or $150,000 any balance in that fund. So, Bob Johnson suggested just put in, we can, we can do that right here in the hearing, or in, in the meeting. So if we do anything, I'm just, I'm just gonna do it this way since I probably put in as much work as anybody. Yeah. I'm gonna suggest um, we change the 500 to 300,000 and then add the words, shall be repaid to the Rural Services Fund or General Fund. Out of the, and then they should ask you that. So we can borrow those funds and then we will be paid with the TIF. So none of the funds getting shorted, they're going to get reimbursed with the TIF. We're just borrowing against ourselves, we're not going to So future years, do we want to levy more on the general fund or general basic whatever it is to, to get some money in there to get more TIF or not? Mm -hmm. so when, we, when, we get, when we get enough to, to do the road, we'll have to take a whole bond. So we wouldn't be using our funds, it would be against the bond. We'll be going through Northland Securities to borrow three to five, six million dollars to fix the Tanner Road. And then this TIF will re re repay the bond. It's just like the lost money is doing as you're paying the bond. This, this language is just for this year. We didn't want to do a bond for $300,000. It's not worth, the fees and the interest could be more worth than what the principal is. So it's my motion to change to 500,000 to 300,000 and add a uh, general fund along with the rural fund to be repaid by increment tax revenues received by the living in the rural plan. That's perfect. Ready for the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Approved minutes of October 21, 23, and 30. I move the approved minutes presented on October 21, 23, and 30. Second that. Any corrections or deletions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Approved October bills. We make a motion to pay the October. October bills. Support. Now uh, five hundred twenty-eight thousand eight hundred thirty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Payroll changes. We can do this as a consent or take them individually. We have two from the sheriff's office, the jailers. Um, Austin Gladden moved to full time starting November eight. Hired full time, not moving full time. Okay, sorry. Hired full time November 8, starting at 30,000. And Kyle Anger, part time? Correct. He has a few things to anything. Both of them have gone through the MMPI testing, the, the psychological testing, the interviewing, the background. Uh, I don't know that I've ever explained to you gentlemen. We have to have a certain number of female jailers and a certain number of male jailers to meet the, the standard. Resignations that have come across this desk. We had to hire two males. So uh, they both passed the entire background, passed the MMGI, both of the psychological chat, the interviews, and so forth. Two you want me? Let's do the sheriff's office first, then we'll do the secondary group. Thank you, Sheriff. Move the approved uh, 
uh, adding Kyle Henniger to the Pasco County payroll as of November 12th. And also Austin Gladden is full time starting November 8th. Second, Pat. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, and signed. Secondary road, we had a letter from Andrew McGuire. Um, moving Scott and Gills. Different jobs, effective November 4. So one from Laborer to Sign Man. I move to accept the changes for Andrew McGuire at Secondary Road for Scott and Gills. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, so sign. Consider disallowance of business property tax credit assessment year 2019 for 211 North C Street in Oscarusa. Yes. yes, please. We looked into that. This one here is a resident. The way I understand it was a child care, so it was a commercial resident. The individual bought it and he's going to turn it into just a house or residence, so he loses his commercial tax credit. And the supervisors have to approve that. So it no longer qualifies for the business tax credits, basically. And the assessor makes that determination. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to approve it. So, it's just so we need to approve the disallowance. Yeah. Okay. Move. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay. Consider police protection for appropriated cities. Uh, this is on the agenda. Sheriff, you send an email to, this is the reason I put it on here, is we already, you send an email, we're supposed to have a meeting in October with all the cities, we've not done that yet. And so I just wanted us to know that we even want to have a meeting. We want to do it at $42 an hour. We want to change it. We're keep it the same. The sheriff's already sent out one to Avril saying he's fair on keeping it the same. So. You for this fiscal year you're talking about? Yeah. You think we need to have a meeting on it for us to address with the cities? I don't, from my standpoint, I don't believe you do, but that's, you know, after the last uh, meeting we had in here, it's up to you, gentlemen. I'm happy with the way it currently is. Um, we're able to handle them. Are we, are we, are you sticking with the $42 an hour or the same dollar amount as what they've been doing the last two and three or four or five years? Well, we deducted the number of hours, extra hours we gave them to where it meets $42 an hour. Okay. Or they, uh, so yeah, we deducted the number of hours they got in the contract. So, so if they want to add hours, you're okay with that too, at $42 an hour? As long as we don't have too many of them adding too many hours. That's okay. Right. Which I don't, you know, as you get a gentleman, no, I go to all the meetings, and I, I think oh, they're all happy. I know we have one representative here for one of them. I think everybody's happy with it, but it's just whether you gentlemen are or not. Uh, we could, if, if, let's just say, uh, go to sale for example. If they wanted to add hours, we could, but if all, Eight of them want to add hours, then we got to look at the numbers. Uh, we're not having any trouble. We're handling it now the way they are. Is it, is it working the way that it was set up? Did you get George? I'll, I'll get Come on up here. I'll, I'll, I'll make something for the rule. Come on up. Put it. That way everybody knows you're here. And yeah. Yeah. This is Mayor Tabacus from University Park. Uh, Mayor George Tavekis from University Park. <laughs> Thank you. My, my question is, is it working for, Russ, is it working for the cities that didn't have this in their budget today? Yes, the existing one, it is working for them. Okay, and is the, is the board okay with the way we discussed it at the work session for the communities? I'm not speaking necessarily for the community University Park, as speaking for all of them as a whole, like the Barnes City, uh, Rose Hill, those, those folks that didn't have it in their budgets to begin with, is the board okay with the way that was set up? Well, basically, it was set up to $42 an hour, so they contracted one hour, so they have a contract. Those contracts are important for two reasons. Number one, the state law requires each incorporated city to have police protection. Correct. That does not come to county levies. I mean, that's, that's zone police protection. Number two is, when, when you, 
when the municipalities and political subdivisions have, have, to have contracts for fire protection and police protection, in this county, the ambulance service is provided by the entire county levy. So that, that whoever has those contracts are disallowed from voting on 911 services. So these contracts are serving two different purposes for the Iowa Code, and that's why they're important. And so, um, you know, I think, you know, yeah, forty two dollars is a is a bare bone. I don't think it even covers our cost either, but it's, it's the best we can. And really, it, each each mayor and city council, according to code, gets to determine their own amount of level of police protection for their own citizens. That's not this board's responsibility. Right, but it was discussed at the work session that we were going to get together as a group and discuss this before we submitted our budgets for next year so that we didn't run into the same problem. And I know from, I'm, it's on my agenda tomorrow night um, to discuss it with the council, but for the cities that aren't here and aren't represented tonight, will that contract still be okay at $42 an hour for next fiscal year. That's what we're here to discuss, that $42 is the number, is the number we're all going to agree with. Because I'm, I'm probably going to send an email to all the cities and say this is at $42 an hour. It's at your discretion how much how much public safety your citizens receive. Yeah. How many hours they want or how many hours yeah. you guys want to provide them with public safety. Okay. I don't know what the rate is now. Stuff. Exactly. It'll yeah. be a set rate. When when you guys think you're going to try and do that tonight? Set the rate. That's what we're that's what we're here talking about now. Right. It's forty two dollars an hour. It's still suitable for everybody. I didn't send out an email to all the cities and say. It's in the ballpark, I think. You know. Okay. I guess we're happy. I guess I'm happy with forty two dollars as of now. So. I'm, I'm well, we we got we've got considered that on the agenda, so we can make a motion that. This is where we're at, and we move on. Or we can just discuss it. And, and if you think we need to have a work session or a meeting to discuss it, I'm, I'm open for that. I don't know that we need to have a meeting. I just didn't want to find out in March that you know, we, we need to increase the budget after everything's submitted to the state. Right. 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 So I just want to make sure it's in front but of them. I know last fall when we got into all this, we said we'd have a meeting in October to make sure everybody was good. And I guess that's what we're asking Russ and you. Are you guys good? Or do we need I to think so. Good? I need to discuss it with the council. Okay. The council, I mean, the council's going to tell me what is good or not. But. Right. Well, $42 an hour is basically the bare bones and cost of a, of a uh, deputy. Five bucks an hour for a car. I mean, we're going we're gonna to rent a car for five bucks. And, a, and, and all the electronic equipment goes with it. And a problem we run into is Iowa Code does not let us provide fleet protection. So if we're funding something that costs us 42 bucks an hour, we're charging 10, we're really breaking Iowa Code. Because we're not allowed to do that. So that's why this come up and we're trying to get our exact cost. So, you know. Well, I understand. I understand. It's as cheap as it can be and everybody's in line. I just so. wanted to have something to present to the council as yeah. we start the, the budget work sessions and I'm sure that the, the communities that try and work through this with their general funds that aren't as lucrative as some, yeah. they, they need some time to plan. And that's why I want to buy Russ because the University Park is economic development opens two bars. You might want more time than what he's providing now, you know, because of the problems that come along with that. And that's why that's why I mentioned it to him. So okay. you know what I mean. So, yeah. Thanks for thanks for your comments. We're, we're gonna move on. Yep. I, I guess that's what we're here tonight. Is we we sell on forty two dollars this spring. Are we still good to forty two dollars now? Thank yes. you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. We're going to reconsider next year and see what the problem is. Yeah. So let's, let's just have a motion. This is what we're settled with. And then, uh, I make the motion that we uh, do police protection for $42 an hour to the incorporated cities. I support that. Any further discussion? Then we can readdress this next year. Just real, real quick. Next down 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 down. Down. Just here. Put my budget. Yes. We got, a, we got a motion on the table, Russ. Hang on. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you. Russ? When you say $42 an hour, you're talking about above and beyond, correct? The extra patrol that you're doing. 
what do you mean above and beyond what extra? So, are you are you gentlemen happy with the existing contracts right now? Yes. Yeah. But all of, all of them are paying the forty two dollars an hour right. for the extra patrol we provide them, the, the traffic enforcement, the, the youth watch, that type of thing. That's what you're talking. That's what you just voted on. Correct. Police protection is forty two dollars an hour. So can I tell the councils that, because this is my busy week, I'll be at all the council meetings this week and next week, can I tell them they can renew their contracts with you? Yes, that's 42 dollars. Okay. I'm gonna do my best to have an email sent out the next couple days as well to the city mayors. I just, because yeah, they've been hitting me up and I've been referring to you. I just wanted to, you to know, if you go to a city council and say Beacon says, no, we want four more hours a week or four more hours a month, you know the yeah, it's up to you to provide it if you can, but it's going to cost them right. $42 an hour. Sure. I was just trying to give you an answer to the question if it came up. Right. Maybe I didn't make it clear enough, I guess. So. Good Sorry. Enough. Public comments? Motion to adjourn. Support. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye